I'm not really one to just replay a video game. If I like something enough, I'll return to it later, but most of the time once I finish playing something that's I'm just done with it. I might come back to it like a year or two later, but not super often. But one of the only ones that I do revisit pretty often is Spider-Man PS4. It's probably not the, the most normal thing to revisit super often, but I like it quite a bit. I think it's a fun game, it's pretty well written, and most importantly the gameplay is some of the most fluid I've seen in a game of this type. I replayed it again pretty recently. I thought the game was going a little bit too well. I decided to downgrade my experience to another Spider-Man game, the one from almost 20 years ago. The game... the game where Tobey Maguire looks like a chapped lip pretending to be a human. This game falls into the category of low-budget games that were cheaply tacked together to market a new movie. Uh, same with such classics as The Smurfs Dance Party, Alvin and the Chipmunks, and Shark Tale, which somehow manages to be even worse than the source material, somehow. This game was developed by Treyarch, a developer mostly known for making sports games and the Dreamcast port of the 2000 Spider-Man game, so obviously that makes them the perfect candidate for this game, right? For this video, I'll be emulating the GameCube version, which is obviously a joke. I'm clearly playing this game very legally on a real GameCube. Apparently, the Xbox version has a little bit of extra content, but I have no way of accessing that, and even if I did, I really don't care. I can't imagine it makes a huge difference. The game starts with an opening cinematic featuring a CGI animated fight scene, and honestly, it's not that bad, all things considered. For 2002, anyways. The animation is a bit stiff, but at the very least the character models on display here look pretty good for low-budget 2002 CGI. Before I start the game for real, I'm gonna check out the tutorial, which must be important if it's taking up one of only two options in the start menu, and because if you don't, then in the first level the narrator berates you for skipping it. Here's a tip for when you're on the side of a building. If you press the zip line button, you'll zip in the direction you're crawling. Of course, you'd know this if you played the basic tutorial, but I guess you're just cooler than the rest of us. Well, actually, he does that either way, but it's nice having the illusion of being able to prevent it. The game spawns you into the tutorial, which takes place in my favorite iconic location from the Spider-Man movies, Purgatory. The tutorial level takes place in a strange, empty void, with two empty buildings and no sound but wind echoing through the emptiness. Or at least that's all you hear, until the disembodied voice of Bruce Campbell starts explaining to you how to play the game. Greetings. Welcome to the tutorial. Yeah, I know, you want to get on with things, beat up the bad guys, do the whole superhero thing, blah blah blah. Well, what even is this place? Is Peter finally in hell? Or did Bruce Campbell trap me in his personal pocket dimension to torture me by making me play this game? I'm gonna assume it's the latter, because holy shit, torture is a good description of how this game feels to play. This is quite possibly the worst controlling game I have ever played. And that's saying a lot, because I've played Shadow the Hedgehog. For starters, just walking is a struggle because of how janky the camera control is. You know how in something like an old Resident Evil game, when the camera angle changes, you would just keep walking in the same direction? Until you let go of the analog stick. This game does that for some reason, and it's god-awful. It works in Resident Evil because that game has tank controls and fixed camera angles, so it works in the player's favor that you keep moving in the same direction, because otherwise it would just be wonky and hard to move around. It still is, but it's a little bit less with the camera angles. This game, however, is neither. It does not have tank controls or a fixed camera, so what's the goddamn point here? This is a three-dimensional action game, so in this case all it does is hinder my ability to move properly. No matter what I do, I never really feel like I'm actually in control, because half the time he just goes in whatever direction he feels like, instead of following the analog stick, like in a normal 3D third-person game. You try to change the camera angle as you run, so you can run in a different direction, and 12 polygon Tobey Maguire over here just keeps going instead of doing what I need him to do, and it makes simple movement so much more difficult than it needs to be. That's all bad enough, but then our wonderful narrator slash all-seeing voice starts explaining how to web-swing, and somehow it's just as bad. You press one button to switch into web-slinging mode. Yes, mode. 
It's not like a manual thing, you just press the trigger and then he starts going, and he doesn't stop until you cancel out of it. You steer yourself by moving the left analog stick around, left and right change directions, and up and down change your altitude. But turning to the left or to the right never works, because he swings so slow that it takes six hours and the widest curve possible just to make a left turn. Now instead what you're supposed to do is cancel out of the web swing, turn to the direction you want to go, and start swing, and start the swinging again. Other than that, there's not much else to the tutorial. You learn how to crawl on the ceiling and do some very basic combat. Eventually I reached a point where I couldn't find the next objective and so I just quit the tutorial hoping like hell I was ready. Level 1 starts with the first of many animated cutscenes, and I take back everything I said earlier when I was talking about the intro because these character models are awful. 2002 was a terrifying time, wasn't it? This cutscene gives us an extremely brief rundown on the events of the movie leading up to Uncle Ben's death. He's running through plot points at lightning speed, it's terrible. I'd hate to be a kid that got this game in the 2000s without seeing the movie first. At the very least, they got Tobey Maguire to do voice acting for this game, but I don't know. He and his game model both seem like they'd rather be anywhere else, and I don't blame them one bit. The last time I saw Uncle Ben alive, we argued. Alright, so this here is level 1. Our objective is to defeat the Skulls, because apparently now the guy who killed Uncle Ben is a gang member. The game tasks us with swinging around this little city area, looking for members of the Skulls to beat the shit out of. Apparently the goal here is to get them to tell you where Uncle Ben's killer went, except Peter is the world's least competent interrogator because all he does is assault them until they go unconscious and disappear without giving them a chance to talk, and then he complains that they didn't know anything. Like, of course he didn't know anything, idiot, you just knocked him off a building before he had a chance to speak. Hell, before you even asked for information. What's with the get up, chump? Another dead end. Well, one of these losers is gonna give me some answers. The web slinging controls are just as clunky as ever, but now you're in a big open space to kind of test it out. You get used to it a little bit. What's not easy to get used to is the combat. Even though it's currently just two basic attacks, this combat is somehow just as jank as the normal movement. First, you have to catch up to an enemy and either punch or kick them. Then you just keep doing these two moves on them until they're down. Some of these rooftops have enemies with guns too, and they're the absolute worst. They can start attacking you long before you have a chance to run up to them, and they'll really do a number on your health bar. You can jump around to dodge them a little bit, but it's very finicky and only really works if it's just one enemy. And it's fine. I finished the level, that's what counts, right? The next level takes place in a warehouse full of skulls, and the game introduces stealth mechanics. Well, one stealth mechanic. If you're in an unlit area, then enemies can't see you. The game tells you this like it's going to be some kind of stealth segment, except in order to get to where you have to go to progress the level, you have to step out of the shadows, and I swear to god there's no way to do this without being instantly spotted. And even if you manage to get there unseen, it just leads you to an area where you have to kill a bunch of enemies to progress, and they just alert everyone else in the area, so like, what's the, what was the point of the stealth? There's no way to go through this. This part right here is where the controls suddenly hit their peak. Remember all the complaints I had with the combat controls in the last level, where you'd only be fighting one or two enemies at a time? Well now you're expected to fight like eight of them all at once. Now usually in games like this, the enemies would kinda take their turn, for lack of a better word. they probably give you a little space and attack less frequently so that the player has breathing room to deal with them all. This game throws all of that out the window, everyone attacks you at once, and you just have to deal with it. You can barely move away from them because they all try to crowd around you and stun lock you, making you lose even more damage. And one of them has a gun and is standing farther away from you, so you're gonna get hit and get stuck taking bullet damage because the other guys are all attacking you at once and trying to get you stuck there while one of them shoots you from just far away enough to not be able to get to without losing a ton of health on the way. If by some miracle you can get out of this, then you can try grabbing objects to throw at them, such as this explosive barrel that I can never use without damaging myself too because the camera controls make it nearly impossible to aim anywhere. And while you listen to me whine about this, you might be wondering, can't you just dodge or something? You'd think there would be some kind of dodge button or something, right? As far as I can tell, no! They didn't tell me how to during the combat tutorial. None of the buttons I pressed seemed to do anything related to a dodge. I even tried looking up whether or not you can, and all I could find was some guide that I'm pretty sure wasn't even for this game, and that also said that dodging, quote, isn't really thinking like Spider-Man. You know, Spider-Man, known for sitting there and taking it. 
I was stuck on just this one part of the level for such a long time. The worst part is that there's no checkpoints or anything, so if you die during this one segment, you have to make your way all the way back here. Eventually, I finally beat all the enemies in this one room, but then I got killed by another enemy that only triggers when you walk to this corner of the room and had to restart the whole goddamn level over again. But eventually, I did finish it. The next segment of the level is just traversing a vent system and then beating a few enemies that aren't in groups, thank god. Surely the next level is something different, right? No. And there's even more enemies, and more of them with guns, all trying to kill you at once, all in a big crowd. I sat there trying this part of the level over and over again for like 20 minutes before I just gave up completely. This review is basically just first impressions type of things, cause this game sucked so much I couldn't even get past the third level. It's just that aggressively bad. I used a cheat code that unlocks all the levels so that I could see what else there is in this game before I made a review. I skipped the level I was stuck on and went to the next one. Uh, this time we're treated to another terribly animated cutscene this time looking somehow even worse than before. The new objective is to just test out certain movements to get pictures for the bugle, and I just know that Jameson will love these pictures of Spider-Man shooting at a balloon for no apparent reason. The game introduces a new enemy type, these little green drone-looking things. At first they seem like a nice change of pace compared to the hell that was the warehouse level, but don't be fooled, this thing sucks just as much. They may not be able to hurt you all that much, but hitting them yourself is like trying to catch a fish with your bare hands. So you have to swing around them, and then cancel out of the swing to attack them. Then repeat the process, but because you have to cancel out of the swing, you lose so much height while attacking that it takes twice as long to regain your height. Then they just throw more at you and expect you to just deal with it. And then more! It takes ages to kill just one of them, imagine killing 20. I gave up on that level and tried just going straight to the final boss, and I'm aware that's stupid, but... Uh, nah. The final boss is literally just more of the drone combat, except now it's faster and harder to hit, and when you knock him off the glider, he just body slams you into the ground before you have a chance to react. After that, I just quit for real, completely. I'd probably go as far as to say this is the worst thing I've ever played, or at least one of the worst, but I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. There's a few things I like about it. For one, I like the lineup of villains in this game. Green Goblin isn't the only villain in the game. They added some extra villains from the comics, and they're all redesigned to look more in line with this universe's character designs. You got Vulture, Scorpion, and Shocker all making appearances, with Kraven the Hunter being included if you're on the Xbox version. And I like seeing how these characters might have looked if they'd shown up in the movies. So, yeah, good job on that aspect. But that's it. I, I said I had a few things I liked, but no, that was the only one. That's the one thing I liked, so screw this game, I hope the sequels are better. That's it, that's the whole video, goodbye.